abdominal hernia. Uh, we should uh, insist uh, in this uh, video uh, that uh, this video and the following few videos are just a general idea about uh, abdominal hernia uh, for the second year medical student not for surgery not for the older student in the fifth or sixth year um, what is abdominal hernia abdominal hernia is protrusion of a structure viscous or organ from the abdominal cavity through a defect in the abdominal wall um, to understand this uh, definition what is the structure of any hernia if this is the uh, thickness of the abdominal wall uh, this is the skin and superficial fascia this is the muscle layer and the muscle layer is lined with parietal peritoneum any hernia to occur should have a defect defect in the muscle layer and this defect usually occur due to muscle weakness through the defect in the muscle layer the peritoneum the peritoneum herniate through this defect to form a peritoneal pouch called hernial sac this dotted line representing the peritoneum herniate through the defect forming a peritoneal pouch called hernial sac the sac is formed of three parts the narrow part as a defect is called the neck the tip is called fundus and the middle part is called body please uh, change these two words this is the body and here is the fundus change this label um, the peritoneal pouch which consists of neck, body, and fundus. Sure containing the structure or the viscous or the organ herniate from the abdominal cavity. Here I draw a loop of intestine inside this hernial sac. This is structure or organ or Vesera herniate is called the content of the hernia. Usually, the content of hernia usually is intestine or fold of peritoneum called the greater omentum. Sure, uh, this intestine and this hernial sac is not outside the body. Sure, they are covered by skin, superficial fascia, muscle layer. Therefore, the outer covering of the hernia sac is called coverings of the hernia. Therefore, any hernia is formed of four parts. Defect in the muscle layer. Defect in the abdominal wall. And this defect is due to muscle weakness. And peritoneal pouch herniate through this defect and this peritoneal pouch is called the hernial sac formed of neck body and the fundus and the hernial sac sure containing contents of the hernia like this loop of intestine and the sac is covered from outside by coverings of the hernia this is a structure of any hernia what is the etiology of hernia Etiology of hernia may be 
congenital congenital sac and this congenital sac the loops of intestine or omentum enter this congenital sac leading to congenital hernia like congenital oblique inguinal hernia which will be discussed in little detail in the next video the cause of the hernia may be acquired acquired causes the most important is two factors muscle weakness what is the cause of muscle weakness muscle weakness may be due to obesity because in obesity there is the position of fat between the different muscles of the anterior abdominal wall and the position of fat in each muscle leading to separation of muscle fibers therefore separation of muscle layers external abdominal oblique from internal abdominal oblique separation of uh, internal abdominal oblique from transverse abdominus by fat and in each muscle there is the position of fat with separation of muscle fiber leading to defect in this muscle and weakness of this muscle or marked severe stretch of muscles as in pregnancy or injury of muscles of the anterior abdominal wall by incision leading to healing by scar and the scar tissue is weak leading to incisional hernia in this operative scar or during abdominal operation and during abdominal incision we may injury uh, a nerve supply to a muscle leading to paralysis of abdominal muscle typical example during appendicectomy or also called appendectomy we may injury ilioinguinal nerve which is the nerve supply to the conjoint tendon paralysis of conjoint tendon leading to weakness of the posterior wall of the inguinal canal and the breed is both to direct inguinal hernia also in addition to muscle weakness what is the cause of protrusion of viscera outside the abdomen sure expulsion of these viscera outside the abdominal cavity is due to increase intra-abdominal pressure increase intra-abdominal pressure leading to expulsion of abdominal contents outside the abdomen leading to hernia what is the cause of increase intra-abdominal pressure sure is straining straining why straining we also strain due to expulsion of something from the body <coughs> expulsion of sputum as in chronic cough in chronic bronchitis in smokers or expulsion of baby in females during delivery or expulsion of feces during patient with chronic constipation or expulsion of urine in patient with uh, urinary tract obstruction therefore chronic straining leading to increase intra-abdominal pressure or abdominal swelling the commonest abdominal swelling sure in female is pregnant uterus or abdominal swelling may be pathological like hepatomegaly or splenomegaly or presence of fluid in the abdomen like ascites all these factors leading to increase intra-abdominal pressure and the expulsion of abdominal contents outside the abdominal cavity as hernia what are the types of hernia there are two types of abdominal hernia first of all and the commonest hernia appear on the surface of the body as a swelling if the hernia appear on the surface of the body as a swelling it is called external hernia and sure the commonest hernia is inguinal hernia less commonly femoral umbilical paraumbilical epigastric lumbar spigelian hernia and other incisional hernia less commonly internal hernia hernia occur inside the body 
but I don't see anything on the surface. Like what? The simple example, defect in the diaphragm. If the defect in the diaphragm, like congenital diaphragmatic hernia, the patient is born with defect in the diaphragm, and through this defect, abdominal content herniate from the abdomen to the thorax. This is the spleen in the thorax, part of large intestine, small intestine inside the thorax. Therefore, in the phragmatic hernia, the abdominal content herniate into the thorax without any swelling on the surface. Therefore, it is called internal hernia. How we diagnose hernia? Hernia usually diagnosed by the complaint of the patient. The patient usually complaining of a swelling. Swelling not in any site. Swelling here is abdominal hernia? Sure no. Swelling in the anatomical site of hernia. Famous sites of hernia, like swelling in the inguinal region, swelling in the femoral triangle, swelling in the umbilical region. Therefore, if a patient complain of swelling in anatomical site of hernia, the first thing you will think is hernia. And if patient complaining of swelling in the anatomical site of hernia, you should ask the patient, what is the factors which increase the size of this swelling? The patient said to you that the swelling increase with increase intra-abdominal pressure and decrease with decrease abdominal pressure. How? The patient tell you that the swelling increase by cuff <coughs> straining and increase by standing in all these conditions there is increase in abdominal pressure and the swelling decrease or disappear completely when the patient lie down because during lying flat the intra abdominal pressure decrease with disappearance of the swelling during examination of this swelling, ask the patient to cough. During coughing, the swelling increase in all direction. <coughs> this is called expansile impulse on cough. Bulbate the swelling. During bulbation of the swelling, when you compress the swelling, the swelling disappear. This is a famous character of hernia called reducibility. By manipulation, the swelling return to the abdomen and disappear. You should notice the direction of reduction of the hernia because direction of reduction of the hernia is diagnostic for the type of hernia. We should also palpate the site of the hernia after reduction. After reduction of the hernia, palpate the abdomen, you will feel by your finger a defect in the abdominal wall through the hernia occur. And if you close the defect, ask the patient to cough. You close the defect and ask the patient to cough. If this is a defect and feel this defect and close the defect. If you ask the patient to cough, the hernia does not appear. This is the idea of a famous test called internal ring test to differentiate direct inguinal hernia from indirect inguinal hernia from femoral hernia. This is the swelling in the inguinal region or femoral triangle femoral hernia. And ask the patient to cough, expansile impulse on cuff. Maybe the swelling, the swelling disappear, reducible. And if we feel here, you feel a defect, 
close the defect and ask the patient to cough. Internal ring test, ask the patient to lie flat and close the internal inguinal ring by your fingers. And we all know that the internal ring is half an inch above the mid inguinal point. Close the internal ring and ask the patient to cough. Think with me. There are three possibilities. When the patient cough, the hernia doesn't appear. This is one possibility. The second possibility is hernia appear above the inguinal ligament. The third possibility is hernia appear below the inguinal ligament. We are now close the internal inguinal ring. If the hernia doesn't appear, think with me. What does this mean? This means that the hernia pass from the internal inguinal ring. What is the type of hernia passing through the internal inguinal ring? This is the oblique or indirect inguinal hernia. It has the same name. Indirect or have the same name, oblique inguinal hernia. If you close the internal ring and ask the patient to cough and the hernia appear medial to your finger here, above the inguinal ligament, what is medial to the internal ring? Inguinal triangle or Hasselbeck's triangle. And what is the type of hernia pass from the Hasselbeck's triangle? Sure, it is direct inguinal hernia. If you ask the patient to cough and the hernia appear below your fingers, below the inguinal ligament, below the inguinal ligament, this is the softness opening and femoral ring, and this is the site of femoral hernia. This is the, the test which differentiate between the three types of groin hernia. Groin hernia is oblique inguinal hernia, direct inguinal hernia, and the femoral hernia. This is uh, a small idea for uh, the second year medical student about what is hernia and how to diagnose hernia. We will discuss in the next video the inguinal hernia. Thank you for good listening and good luck.